Shalom. Welcome to this episode of MTV Junior. We are going to have a great show today. This is brought to you by Baron Hirsch Congregation in Memphis, Tennessee, the greatest show in America. Okay, well, first of all, my name is Uri Pilchowski. I'm going to be the host of your show today. We're going to do a lot of great things today. But first, let me tell you who I am. My name, like I said, is Uri. And this is my family. You can see I have a beautiful family. I'm right there in the middle. Then next to me, you have my wife, Eliza, in the red skirt. She is amazing. And then I have six amazing girls, or oh, six amazing children, five girls, one boy. I have Abigail, I have Tanima, Gila, Naomi, Tova, and Moshe, who's right there in the middle. You can see him. In. And they are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful family. Okay, now let me tell you where I live. I live in a place called Mitzvah Yericho. You can see it says it right there. And if you look at a map where the red balloon is right outside Yerushalayim, that's right. I don't live in America. I don't live in Memphis, Tennessee, or Los Angeles, or New York. I live in Eretz Yisrael. And right outside Yerushalayim in the desert is my town called Mitzvah Yericho. Look how beautiful it is. Isn't this amazing? It's so beautiful. Mm, wow, look at that such rolling mountains, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible. Okay, let's see, what are we gonna do today? Well, of course, the best part of today is we're gonna win raffle tickets. If you get the questions right, you can get the raffle tickets. All you need is a pen and paper, and later you're going to send me an email with the answers, and then you get a raffle ticket, and with the raffle tickets, you can win amazing prizes. Okay, what we're going to do today is, besides having games where you can win, raffle tickets. We're also going to hear a story about George Washington, the first president of the United States. But it's not a story about when he was president. It's a story about when he was a little, little kid. That's the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to play the Hebrew word of the game. We're going to learn a Hebrew word. You're going to like the word. You'll see. And then we're going to learn about the police. We're going to learn about the police, all good things about the police we're going to learn. And then we're going to play a memory game. And then we're going to do one last thing to win more raffle tickets. And that's going to be our whole show. So buckle up, get ready. This is going to be a lot of fun. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to go hear a story about George Washington. So let us go over to our story room and watch there. Here we go. Okay, I have a great story for you. We just recently celebrated July 4th, which was America's Independence Day. And one of the people most responsible for America's independence was President George Washington. Before he was a president, he was a general in the American Revolutionary Army. That means that he was the leader of the Americans who fought against the British for America's freedom. That was his responsibility. He was in charge of the entire army and everybody's future in America rested and relied on George Washington. But before he was a general, he worked to see if he measured fields and farms to see how big they were. But before that, he lived with his father on his family's farm. This is a picture of that farm. Now it's not a picture taken with a camera because George Washington lived 250 years ago. Now, what made George Washington sp such a special person? Well, the answer you see, it goes back all the way to when he was a child and a story that they tell about George Washington. Now, the problem is we don't know for sure if this story is real or not, but even if it's not a real true story and the exact details aren't for sure true, it tells you how special people thought George Washington was. He wasn't just somebody that could fight because when he was done leading the army, everybody in America elected him to be president of the United States, to be the first president. And they loved him so much, they named the capital city of America after him. That's why it's called Washington, D.C. And that wasn't enough. There's an entire state named George Washington. So what's this story that we're, that we're going to tell you? about George Washington from when he was a little kid. And that's what this picture that the artist drew of George Washington. The story goes like this. 
George Washington's father wanted to get him a gift. So he bought him a hatchet. This is a picture of a hatchet. See the hatchet on the, on the ground over there? That's what he gave. It's almost like a knife or an ax. It's, it's bigger than a regular knife and it's not as big as a full ax. Well, George Washington, young boy that he was, wanted to go out and use the ax for the very first time. He wanted to, sorry, his hatchet for the very first time. He wanted to see what it could do. So he went out to a tree and he swung the hatchet as hard as he could and it made a cut in the tree. And he swung it again, he swung it again and the, the, the cut in the tree kept getting bigger and bigger until he swung it one last time and it went right through the tree and the tree fell down. Now this was a cherry tree, which was very valuable. And now he killed the cherry tree. So George Washington knew he was gonna get in a lot of trouble. Because here's the thing, don't waste trees. This isn't just something that they did on the Washington farm. This is actually in the Torah as well. Now, I don't think George Washington or his father knew what the Torah said, but it says that we're not allowed to waste anything. We're not allowed to throw out food unless the food isn't good anymore. We're really supposed to eat everything that we have, and we're not just supposed to waste things. And we learn that mitzvah from the cutting down of trees. The Torah says you're not allowed to cut down fruit trees because that would be wasting them. So instead of cutting down trees, right, then we, we just don't, we don't waste the trees. So George Washington knew because all farmers know that cutting down a tree doesn't just harm you right then and there, but it makes sure that you can never, ever grow fruit on that tree again. You can't fix it. Once you kill the tree, it can never grow back. Well, George Washington's father came out to look at his farm one morning and saw the tree that was cut down. And he said to himself, I didn't tell any of the workers on the farm to cut down trees. And I know I didn't cut down a tree. So who cut down this tree? And he thought to himself, could it be little George that cut down the tree? So he called his son over and said, George, remember the hatchet I got you? George Washington said yes to his father. So he said, well, I'm gonna ask you a question. It's very important that you tell the truth. The truth is worth more than 1,000 trees. And George Washington's father asked him, he said, George, did you use your hatchet to cut down a cherry tree? Now, there was no video, there was no proof. George Washington could have lied but he heard what his father said, that telling the truth is worth more than a thousand trees. So George Washington told the truth and he said, yes, dad, I was the one that cut down the cherry tree. And that's an important lesson for us that we should also tell the truth. And since George Washington told the truth, that showed what kind of a special person he was. And that's why later on he was chosen to be the general in the army and then the first president of the United States, and then somebody who they named a city and a state after. What an important lesson for us all. Okay, that was a great, great story. Now we are, first of all, we have to go back to our regular background and get back to where we are because we are now going to play an incredible, incredible game. Okay, everybody get your pen and paper out. And if you write down the word of the day, which I'm gonna tell you, it's right here, but I'm gonna tell it to you if you can't read it. I'm gonna tell you the word of the day. And then if you write that and send it to me my email, I'm gonna show you my email address in a minute. You can win a raffle ticket. Today's word of the day is Shoter. Shoter is a police officer. Okay, a Shoter is a police officer. That is what a, the word Shoter means. It means a police officer. And the word is actually in the Torah. In the Torah, it says, Shoftim v'shotrim t'itenlecha, that you should appoint, you should hire police officers to make sure that the law, that the law is kept. Okay, so that is Shoter. That's our word of the day. If you send it right here to this email address, okay, then you can win a prize. You just say, hi, my name is whatever your name is, and then you send it to this email address, and you will win a prize. Okay, so now... Let us go to our next great, exciting part, 
we are going to learn all about police. We're going to learn all about the police. Okay, so we have to go back to our story room. Okay, and we are going to, this is going to be great. You ready? Here we go. Enjoy this. Shalom, today we are going to learn about some very special people in our community. They are called the police. We've all heard about the police, we've seen police officers, sometimes we've even met police officers, and they are very, very important, sometimes even the most important people in our community. But what do the police do? Who are the police? What's their job? We're going to learn all about the police, even their cars today. Okay, so that's what this is going to be about, and I think you're really going to love it. And maybe one day, soon, you'll see a police officer and you'll be able to say, hey, I learned all about you, and I know so much about you, and I want to say thank you for all the good work that you do because you keep us safe. And that's really the first job of any police officer is to make sure that the people around them in their community, in their state, in their country, are safe. So let's talk about the police, okay? The first thing that we have to know is what are the police, what are their jobs? What's a policeman or a policewoman's jobs? Okay, so their job, first of all, like we said, is to protect people, but to also what's called enforce the law. What that means is that there are people who make laws. We elect those people, we vote for them, and then they become the lawmakers. Sometimes they could be called a congressperson. Sometimes they could be called a legislator. Sometimes they could be a mayor or a council person. There's a lot of different people that make laws and they make a law. Now we have to follow those laws because we've said that if we're gonna live in this community, then we have to follow the laws of the community. If we're gonna live in the state, we have to follow the laws of the state. If we live in the country, we have to follow the laws of the country. So. The state has people who make sure that everybody keeps the law. And those people are the police. They make sure that everybody keeps the law. That's one of their jobs. Now, they don't make the laws. They just make sure that whatever laws are made, people keep. Now, they also are there to protect people. Okay, They have to make sure that nobody hurts us. So if they see somebody hurting somebody, they're going to stop them from doing it. That's their job, to make sure that nobody gets hurt at all and everybody is as safe as they can be. So the police have two jobs. One is to enforce the laws, right? When, people, when, the, when the people that make the laws make a law, they make sure that everybody keeps the law. You can get in trouble with the police if you don't keep the law. And the second thing is they're here to protect all of us in case anybody wants to harm us, or if we're going to get into any trouble or anything like that, the police save us and make sure that we don't get into any trouble. That's why they're such good people because they protect us from harm. And that's why we always have to say thank you when we see a police officer. Okay, now, some people say that police officers hurt people. That's not true, right? Police officers, their job is to make sure that everybody's safe. So if they would hurt people, they wouldn't be making sure that people are safe. Policemen and policewomen become police officers because they want to make sure that nobody gets hurt. But you know what? Sometimes people don't follow the law, right? Sometimes people steal, even though we're not allowed to steal. Sometimes people go ahead and they hurt people, even though they're not allowed to hurt people. Sometimes they break into people's houses or any types of crime that they do. And a lot of those bad things that they do hurt people. Police have to make sure they don't. So if the police see somebody hurting somebody or breaking the law, they're going to arrest them. That's what this policeman is doing. He's arresting somebody that did something very bad. And that's the police person's job. Their job is to stop people and arrest people if they do something wrong. Okay, let's go on. Now, there are men and women police officers. There aren't just men police officers, there are women police officers, and women make up some of the best police officers 
that we have in the country. Now you'll say, wait a minute. Let's say you have a really bad cr a criminal, someone who's a really bad person, and they're very big and very strong. How could a nice looking policewoman like this officer stop a really big bad man? He would simply lift her up and throw her away. Well, it's not true. Did you know that police officers go to school to become police officers? They have to learn a lot of laws. They have to learn a lot of what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. They have to learn how to do things better. Well, part of their school isn't sitting at a desk with a teacher in front of the room learning. Part of their going to school is learning how to stop people from committing crimes. And there's times where you don't have to be so strong. You just have to be smart and know how to stop somebody. So if somebody tries to hit or hurt a female police officer, and you might think, well, are they really going to be able to protect themselves? Or even a man police officer who isn't strong. Or even a strong woman police officer or a strong man police officer who aren't as strong as the criminal. They know how to do certain moves that can stop somebody very quickly because they're smarter. Right? One of them is like they know how to trip somebody onto the floor, and that doesn't take strength. It just takes smarts. And they might say, hey, look over there. And then the criminal looks up and they go, boop, and they stop them. And then they're able to arrest them and stop them from hurting anybody very quickly. So I know we're making it a little funny, but that's the truth. So there are men police officers. There are women police officers, all types of police officers, because as long as you want to help people and you're going to do it the right way and you really want to do the right thing and be a leader in the community, you can be a police officer. It doesn't make a difference if you're a man, woman at all, as long as you want. There are even dogs that are police officers, okay? You could be a police officer with no problem. Okay, now, there are all different types of police officers. They're not all, not everybody in the police has the same title or the same job. They all have different things that they do. So the people that you see here, they are called uniformed police officers. That's a police officer that wears a uniform. You see them on the street. They're walking around sometimes. Sometimes they're in the police car doing patrols, going around, seeing if there's any criminals or they're just ready to help in case there's something that needs help. That's a regular police officer. And they are very good at their very important jobs. Okay, But then there's also a detective. What's the difference between a police officer and a detective? Well, a detective is a type of police officer, but the detective tries to figure out how crimes were done. A police officer tries to stop the crime from happening or they arrest somebody they see. But what happens if I wake up in the morning and I say, wait a minute, where's my car? I parked my car in front of my house and someone stole it overnight. Oh no. Well, the detective is going to detect who stole the car. They know how to use little hints that maybe by accident the car thief left. Let's say the car thief stood in some mud and then left the mud and they trace and they look at the mud and they bring the mud to a laboratory and say, oh, the mud comes from this part of the city. And then they can slowly, slowly figure out who stole the car. That's a detective's job. Okay, then you have sheriffs and deputy sheriffs. Now, sheriffs, sometimes we think about somebody with a big hat that lived back in Texas 500 years, 200 years ago. That's not what a sheriff is. A sheriff is a police officer who's usually elected. He's chosen by everybody in the city or the county, and the sheriff guards the entire county. Police officers guard the city. Sheriffs protect the whole county. So they're like police officers, and then there's the sheriff, and then there's the deputy sheriffs, okay? Then you have police officers on airplanes. They never wear a uniform. They're secret police officers, and they're called air marshals. And then you have border agents who guard America's border. And then you have crime scene investigators. They'll go to where a crime was committed, and they'll investigate to see if they could find tiny, tiny, tiny hints maybe like a fingerprint or something like that that tells them who did the crime, 
Okay. Last thing we're gonna learn about is a police car. A police car is the car that police officers, usually uniformed police officers, the ones in uniforms drive around. And they drive around in these police cars to stop people from doing crimes. Sometimes they'll see people getting put doing crimes or it'll get the police to the crime that's happening very, very quickly. We all know that the police have special lights on their car, on the roof of their car that go, that turn on in order to tell people that there's a police person there and they need to get through. They have a siren that makes a loud noise. Now, did you know that there are different names for a police car? There's cruiser, squad car, patrol car, black and white. Okay, they all have different names, but they're all police cars and they all help the police do their jobs. Well, that's our lesson on interesting facts about the police. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Okay, I hope you liked that. Wasn't that great? Ah, oh, that was amazing. Okay, we are now going to, first of all, we have to get back our background. We're gonna play a game in just one minute. We have to get our, our cool background so you have the place to send your prize. We're gonna play a memory game. So get your pen and paper out, okay? Get your pen and paper out. And let's get the email address up here so that you can see it, okay? And where I'm gonna tell you five things. After I tell you the five things, then you write them down. You can write them down as I say them. You can pause the show and write them down, but write down these five things and then send them to this email address and you can win a raffle ticket. Here we go. You ready? Okay, number one. Police, number two, sheriff, number three, marshal, number four, oh, number four, let's do police car, and number five, we're going to do car chase. Okay, those are the five things. You can write them down, send them to this email address, and then you will win a prize. Okay, now last thing, if you wanna win two raffle tickets, you can win two raffle tickets. Just send me an email and tell me what this week's Parsha is. And if you send me that email with this week's Parsha, you will be able to win two raffle tickets. Don't forget, if you go to show, you can get the Shabbat fun letter. The Shabbat fun letter has a Dvar Torah jokes, oh, games, so many things that you could do. And of course, you can win even more raffle tickets. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's show. That was today's show. Have a great day. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.